Hi everyone, it's Maria, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about three different books. They're all books on women and what they want out of life, uh, what they are trying to do to get what they want, uh, whether they're good or bad decisions, uh, who knows half the time. But I really, really enjoyed all three of these and wanted to highly recommend them. So the first book, I don't have a copy of to hold up. It's Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. This is a nonfiction book, but it is written so intimately, you feel like you're reading somebody's very well-crafted diary. <laughs> like the kinds of diaries where they put in all of the, all of the details. Um, there are three women in it, obviously, because of the title. The first one is Maggie. She is a high school student who ends up having a relationship with her teacher and then goes on from there and how it affects her life. Uh, there is Lena, who is a housewife from Indiana, whose husband will no longer have any relations of any kind with her, and she is deciding to maybe have an affair. And then there is Sloane, who is a wife, uh, co-restaurant owner with her husband, whose husband really likes it when she uh, has relationships with other people and either films it or tells them about it um, sexually. And so it is definitely not a book that you should read if you don't want to read any sexual details of anything because everything is very laid out, uh, very explicit. It felt a little bit porn <laughs> or um, erotica at, at certain points. But everything in there, the quotes, the way she talked about um, the things that we do as women to try and get noticed, to try and get accepted or loved or valued, uh, where we get our own identity from, how it changes as we age, uh, how it was just so spot on. It made me think a lot about my own life and what I do in my relationships to try and find that acceptance in that safe, secure place. Um, I'm still not even quite sure what I think about some of, some of the choices, uh, or not, uh, especially, I mean, the housewife from Indiana, because again, I recognized several of the details in there, um, but there was just certain things in there that she's, she's so desperate to try and get noticed um, in, in, a, in a sexual way. And, and so she gives up a lot of things to try and get that. Um, and it was hard to watch because you wanted, if she was my friend, you'd tell her like, no, he's just using you for this or no, don't do it. But she just genuinely, it was worth it to her. And um, I got to respect that she at least knew it was what was valuable to her. So that's the first book. The second book was a very fun read. Legitimately, <laughs> it, like it is the, uh, one of the, only books in the last few years that I've read cover to cover in one sitting. I don't know what that says about me at this point in life. <laughs> it's just been really busy. It was fun. Uh, it was not like pure fluff, but it was definitely more like um, sugar cookie or at least a, a salad with a lot of fruit, <laughs> candied walnuts on it or something. Uh, this is The Accidental Beauty Queen by Terry Wilson. It's sort of a mix, if you can imagine, Parent Trap mixed with Miss Congeniality. Uh, and one of the characters is like very into Harry Potter. Made me so happy because it was just fun. It was so fun. The There are two twins uh, and one of them is not very fancy over the top, uh, very plain in what she, she likes. She's very well read, very into Harry Potter. She's the main character. Her sister, Jenny, is a beauty queen. And I thought it was funny that her sister's name is Ginny. <laughs> because Harry Potter. Um, she is working on trying to earn this coveted crown for a contest that their mom won a long time ago. And she ends up getting an allergic reaction to something and her face is just not in a spot where she feels like she can leave her hotel room. So she decides to talk her sister into pretending she is her for the prelim preliminary part of the beauty contest. Meanwhile, her sister accidentally falls in love with a, a guy who she probably shouldn't if she's in the contest. And so, you know, hilarity ensues. But it made me think again a lot about how you, how you think others view you and what they actually think of you, um, how, that, how that affects how you act even. Um, 
I, it was just fun. It made me laugh. It made me like keep going, obviously. Uh, I read it in one sitting, but yeah, if you're into Harry Potter, Miss Congeniality, or Parent Trap, any of those three things would totally make me recommend this book to you, even if you just want a fun read. The last book is one that eventually I will buy for my shelves because I need to mark it up. It is The Moment of Lift by Melinda Gates. I had listened to a lot of interviews with Melinda talking about her books, um, about this book. She was on Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye, and I just really wanted to pick it up. I'm not a huge person who follows. I know a lot of people really love following kind of the big people like that, but uh, I really wanted to read this when I started hearing her quote things from Half a Sky, which is a book written by Nicholas Krustoff in 2009, I looked it up. So it's been 10 years since the book Half a Sky was written. If you've not read that book, I really recommend picking it up. It basically is a nonfiction book about all the problems in the world that are primarily women's issues, but because they are women's issues and they're holding up Half a Sky, if we don't fix these issues, the world's not gonna get better. The Moment of Lift had several quotes in there from that. And this is also about the state of women's issues around the globe, what people are doing to try and make things better, uh, what problems there are. And I really dug this. It was not a very long book, but there was so much meat to it. It took me um, several days to get through it. Um, the issue she addresses, and it starts with, she, she talks about as a philanthropist, uh, especially like, you know, white person, very wealthy coming in, uh, instead of trying to have a savior complex, uh, it, you really have to sit back and listen a lot more and you learn better that way. Imagine that. <laughs> um, and so she and Bill had started off with kind of family health issues, vaccinations, and the more they talked with people, the, they would find out the next linchpin of things that were a problem and the next thing. And so it goes through from vaccines and family health to family planning, uh, which she is Catholic and she kind of talks about that tension in her life and how it's been worth it to her. It goes into the education, unpaid work of women, agriculture with women, women in the workplace, and then the last one is kind of working together. It reminded me a little bit of Abby Wambach's book that she released, I think earlier this year or last year called Wolf Pack, which was about her commencement speech about how when we raise each other up, we raise up the whole wolf pack, the whole um, gets better when we're pointing to each other and encouraging each other. That's kind of the moment of lift. When you lift up a woman, you're lifting up a whole community. One of the stories I really appreciated in here was about a woman who uh, was in Africa and her community practiced uh, female circumcision and uh, she talked her her dad into she said she would be circumcised willingly if he promised she wouldn't have to get married and she could continue her education he decided to ag agree to that because he knew he would be shamed if he didn't let her go through with that she went on to getting an education then getting scholarships to come to the United States to study and then people <laughs> She nagged her village long enough where they finally, the wealthy men, would send her away to go get an education. And she said, I'm going to come back and help things. Uh, how many of you have sent away sons to the United States to get education? And no, none of them have come back to help. And uh, sure enough, they listened. She got her master's. Uh, she came back to her village and since then has, has changed her village. They no longer practice circumcision. They are educating both boys and girls. Um, and just the whole idea of, I had never really thought about that. A lot of times uh, when women, when you help out a woman, they, they come back, they come back for you. They try and help out too. And I appreciated that, that story so much. I had never thought about it that way. Anyway, it reminded me of Wolf Pack by Abby Wambach, but again, with, with all of the information and statistics of Half a Sky, which I think was totally necessary. Um, I've been in a very big mood for activism lately, and this was very helpful. So those are three books that I highly think, highly recommend. I think you should pick them up. If you've read any of them or you have questions in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Bye.